Welcome to Dracina Wines Podcast. Our wines plus your moments equals great memories. I'm your host, Lori, and this is a podcast about all things wine. Welcome to Wine for Bet Street. The letter N. N. I mean, we're just plugging along here. Yes, yes. No matter where we are, we do Wine for Bet Street. We do. And I am sad to say our little mascot did not make the trip cross country. Um, Too much wine? Yeah, there was just a bit too much other stuff in the suitcase um, in order for us to uh, fit Elmo in there. Um, You should have bought Elmo a seat on the plane. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. That's what I should have done. So we are Elmo list today, but he is there in our hearts. Yes. And uh, today we are talking Negro Amero. And I'm going to go right into it. We'll start the video. Yeah. Sounds, sounds good. <laughs> Welcome to Wine for Bet Street, and as Elmo said, the letter of the day is N, Negro Amaro, and hey Debbie, what's going on? Oh, you know me, I just can't keep up with myself these days. I know, you are a very, very busy person. Busy. I can't wait till Labor Day when it slows down. <laughs> no, I don't want Labor Day because Labor Day I means Labor Day I means I need to A, go back to the wrong coast, and B, I have to go back to work. Blah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, though, this, the restaurant business, I didn't think it would be so time-consuming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, way time-consuming. It's, it's, a, it's a big deal. I, I know a couple of other people who own a restaurant, and it is all-consuming. Yeah, yeah. So after um, Labor Day, we go down to five days a week. A week so. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and then we, as the, as the season winds down, so do our hours. All right. So, anyway. So, so. I'm, I'll start off with, uh, uh, with me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, I'm Lori, uh, owner, co-owner with my husband, Michael, of Dracina Wines. We produce double gold winning, yay, Cabernet Franc and Rosé of Syrah. Uh, we are founders of Cab Franc Day. I live the bi-coastal life and currently am on the correct coast, the coast that I want to be on 100% of the time, California. Um, And um, I don't know. I'm not really into describing myself today. I'm tired today. So that's about all we got today. Go ahead, Deb. All right. I'll go. I'm Debbie Giaquindo. I'm known as the Hudson Valley Wine Goddess. I'm a wine blogger, wine writer. I'm a certified specialist of wine and a wine location specialist in port and champagne and a lot of people don't realize and know that i used to have a um, career in travel and i'm a certified travel counselor as well and i'm author of the book tapping the hudson valley which is day trips and weekend itineraries traveling through the hudson valley uh, wine region and just recently opened a restaurant in stone harbor new jersey called kitchen 330 um we're extremely successful right now, and not on wood. Since um, a few months ago, actually, I guess it's almost like seven, six months ago, Debbie and I decided that we were, weren't going to pregame our wine, that we would always do our reveal live on camera. And so this is my wine today. And oh, good. This is mine. Okay. Okay, so let's uh let's see. This is dangerous. I should not pour over my computer. I poured already. All right, so there's. But look how dark it is. Yeah, very dark. Which we'll talk about in the in the uh, in this uh, conversation. All right, here we go. Ooh, I like this. 
nose. I like the nose. It, um, I am getting cocoa, which is nothing I read about, but definitely I plum. plum. <laughs> ah, you owe me a beer. We said it at the same time. Plum. And I've got some spice going on. I got black spice. cherry, blackberry. Ooh, a lot of dark fruits in here. Um, and oh my God, it, the finish is still going. Yeah, my finish really lasted a long time. Yeah, this is so. It like danced. It danced yeah. in my mouth. Yes. Um, there's a night nice, the yeah. This is nice acidity. This makes you want to take another another sip. Very, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So we're we're doing all right. So last month we did uh, Menthia, and we both were shocked. Um, yeah. And really, really, really enjoyed that wine. Um, I'm going two for. This is a nice yeah, wine. I like this too. Yeah. All right. So let's let's get into um, the general characteristics of Negro Amaro. So I'm up first. You are up first. Michael has a Gossamer Cellars located in Murphy's, California, but the grape comes from Amador County. So the Negramo grape, Negramo. So the grapes are medium to large in size and have oval berries and have very thick black uh, violet skins, as you can see here. Um... So they're typically a, a deep um, ruby red with violet overtones, medium to full body with medium to full tannins. I wouldn't say mine is full full tannins. I would say I would say medium bodied on mine. Right. There's some um, there's some contradiction there. Yeah, that's just my uh, my personal opinion. Um, so the flavor profile of this, um, it tends to be flavors of, of plum, black currant, cherry, blackberry, plum, a lot of dark, dark, you know, a lot of dark black and black fruits. Um, it also can be earthy and have flavor or flavors of clove, cinnamon, cocoa, leather, and cedar. So you got the cocoa in yours. I did. Yeah. I did. That's the yeah. first thing I got. Yeah. So, um, you know what I found also very interesting is um, Negaramo drinks best between three to five years. Okay. Well, I get that. And, yeah. And um, a young Negaramo um, in the first two to three years of life will have a more elegant, fresh bouquet with aromas of wild cherries, black and red currants, blackberries tobacco, and licorice root. Okay. Um, and an older, more mature uh, wine will develop a bouquet of prunes, black pepper, herbs, and juniper berries. And I thought that was an interesting kind of like contrast between, you know, right. with, the age, with the age of it. So that's um, what I have on characteristics. Okay. So uh, that kind of leads me into the, the history of it. And the, that is something also that um, there's not a lot of knowledge of this, of this grape at all. Um, you know, I, I, I found a, a lot of websites that had information about it. And let me tell you, these people need to learn what the word plagiarism is <laughs> <laughs> it is word for word on this website as it is on this website as it is on the next website. I was like, wow, like, okay, I guess this is all there is to know about it and we're just all going to say the same thing. So I'm hoping that um, somebody who listens to this or sees it or whatever and knows more about it, more intimately knows about it, uh, can share some more information because it really – there's not a lot of stuff out there and that's a shame because I'm loving this. Um, so it's kind of, kind of a shame. Um, all right. So the history, 
Negro Amaro is a dark-skinned grape best known in the Puglia region of southern Italy. This is actually the most important and the most exclusive vine that Puglia has. So it's like synonymous with the region. There are actually about 12,000 hectares, which is 29,000 plus acres of land throughout the region. And it is especially widespread on the Salento Peninsula. So there it is, the boot of Italy. Okay? It is extremely easy to find this region of Italy because it is the heel of the Italian boot. And this is a crazy region to study about. Um, just in this one region, just here, there are 13 native grape varieties. And there's actually more than 13 produced there, but only 13 are done commercially. So it's, it's insane. And I know several people who have either gone through the WSET um, diploma or in the process of it, and they all like bitch and moan when it comes to Italy, because it's one of the most, you know, as they say, it's one of the most difficult because there's thousands of grape varieties located in Italy, and there's like more than 20 wine regions. So um, kudos to everybody who is an expert in Italy. I give you, I, I bow down to your knowledge. Um, as is the case with many Italian vines, the origins of Negro Romero itself is uncertain. It flourishes in a rocky and arid environment. It's known to be one of Italy's most ancient vines. And as I said, it is synonymous with Puglia. It does go by several different names. Uh, there's Negro Amaro, Negro Amaro, Negro Amaro, Amaro Nero, and Nicra Amaro. And it is, uh, it is considered to be similar, not the same grape, but it is thought to be similar to Primitivo, which we know is, we know better as a Zinfandel. Um, the origins of the name Negro Amaro are not precisely known. There are several different theories about the origins of the name. Some believe that Negro, which means black, is a clear reference to its very dark color, which is obvious in both of our glasses. Um, it is, uh, the peculiarity which has been um, appreciated since the time of the Benedictine monks. And then the other, the other half of it, amaro, actually means bitter. So it could refer to the strong tannins. So there you go, Jim. There are several um, Negro amaros that have very strong tannins. Or the fact that um, in the past, the wines have been left to ferment with a grape skin on the grape skins for a long period of time. And that means that by the end of fermentation, it would be very dark and very bitter. Mine is not bitter at all. Um, and Debbie, you said yours wasn't? Not bitter. Yeah. Um, however, the most probable explanation is that the name Negro Amaro derives from the fusion of the Greek word Mavros and the Latin word Niger both meaning black and referring to the color of the grapes. So in reality, Negro Amero really means black, black. So all about the deepness of the color of that grape. Okay, so there isn't much out there in terms of the history of Negro Amero. And what is out there, as I said, isn't really documented and, you know, 100% this is the fact. So... Um, as I said, the name may come from the Greek word Mavro, which shares a root with Merum, a wine brought to Apulia by the Ilion uh, colonists. So that's that top left-hand corner uh, of the picture. Before the Greeks actually arrived in the 7th century BC. Horace and the other Roman writers mention Mira Tarantina from Toronto and Pliny the Elder describes Mendoria as Viticolosa, which is full of vineyards. So there's our Greek people, our Greek Orthodox. After the fall of the Roman Empire, winemaking declined until it was only kept alive in the monasteries, the Benedictine on Mergia and the Greek Orthodox. So it's kind of, I guess it's kind of hard to tell, but the Greek Orthodox is in the top right-hand corner, and then the Benedictine on Mergia um, monks are in the left 
bottom corner. And Negro Romero could be the grape used in Merum, or it could have been brought by the traders from the home of winemaking in Asia Mina, which is um, over 8,000 years. So not a lot, and that's the bottom right-hand corner is Asia Minor. Um, so as I said, there's a lot of what-ifs and how this occurs, and maybe, and I'm not really sure, but this is what we think about Negro Romero. So, I kind of got that when I was researching too. Yeah, it's um, it's very, it's a, it's a tough grape to figure out. Yeah, yeah, it's sketchy. Yeah, it's, it's sketchy, sketchy, but it's really good. So I'm like gonna pour now. myself another glass. Me too. Um, love that sound. Okay, so um, at this is the point that we kind of uh, talk about the wines that we chose and give a little history. And now, a word from our sponsor. We are known for our award-winning Cabernet Franc and Rosé, but even we can't live on that alone. When we are looking to find some new and exciting wines, we look to our sponsor, Wink, spelled W-I-N-C. Wink makes it easy to discover great wine. It is super simple and even fun. When you first log into their website, you will see a palette profile quiz. They ask you questions like, how do you like your coffee? How do you feel about blueberries? And when you finish the survey, Wink provides you with four wines that are curated to your taste. But if you don't agree, no problem. You aren't required to purchase their suggested wines. You can choose whatever you want. There are no membership fees and there is no obligation. You can skip any month and cancel at any time. Wink makes exploring new wines fun and easy. Wines are constantly changing and start at just $13 a bottle, and shipping is included if you purchase four bottles or more. Sound interesting? Well, we have an amazing offer for our listeners. If you go to trywink.com forward slash winefabet, you will receive $22 off of your first order. That means you'll get four bottles of wine delivered to your door for less than $30. Once again, that's trywink, T-R-Y-W-I-N-C dot com forward slash winefabet. This, this wine uh, is a Tempo Vero, and it is actually a Negro Amaro from uh, Salento, so from Italy, but it is actually a wine from our sponsor, Wink Wines. So, yeah. um, unfortunately, when you do purchase by Wink, in terms of, unfortunately for us, for Wine for Bet Street, there's not a lot of information about the winemaker of this wine. So, all it says is made by Wink. I don't know who actually made the wine. Um, the, wine the grapes are from Italy. They are from the Puglia region. I just don't know anything about the winemaker or um, the grapes themselves. So what you got, Deb? And um, it was eleven. It was eleven dollars. Eleven ninety nine, I should say. Mine was, so it was mine was fourteen on Wink. And first, the first character in the tale is the story of a man named Giovanni Battista Cantiel, who left the city he was born in. Pragamone to follow the woman who will be his mother, or not his mother, be his wife, mother of his kids, Augusto and Domenico. And she later became the inspiration for a wine that now bears her name, Teresa Minara. Aww. So Giovanni began working in the wine world in Puglia, sourcing wines and selling them in the north. And on one trip, Teresa, uh, Teresa Minara accompanied her husband and saw the town of Lecce for the first time. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, L-E-C-C-E. -E. Sounds and, good. Think you nailed it. Okay. <laughs> and she loved it, and she wanted to move there. So in 1950, they moved from Salentino. They moved to Salentino from Imola. So many years later, um, Augusto would start the family winery Canteen. Canteen. Cantile with his dad and his brother uh, Domenico and in, in 1979 that's when they uh, started the winery and a little background on Augusto is he studied winemaking um, in the north in Con I can never pronounce it where Prosecco is made Con 
Congiliano, and he worked at the winery. He worked at wineries in Veneto, or, and uh, he really, really had a passion for white wines, although we're drinking red. <laughs> so, um, and Augusto returned um, to his family and worked as a wine consultant in the villages of, uh, here we go again, Grugano and Sal Salis Salentino. And he purchased his first vineyard in the 1990s. So this is a fairly young, you know, vineyard winery. In 2001, um, the children, um, Augusto's and Dominico's children, Gianni, Paolo, Umberto, and Luisa, um, took over and are leading the way now. Um, sharing the same passion in wine as, as their parents did. And they built, um, in 2003, they built a new winery. Uh, they now own 50 hectare acres, and they manage another 150. And if you're out in that area, you can visit the winery and the tasting room. And they have a test kitchen, and it's a whole experience when you visit the winery. So... That's uh, the information there. And actually, the pictures online look like this really nice. Um, this wine is 13% alcohol. Um, on the label, it says, um, Southern classic taste of rich red fruit balanced by gentle tannins and acidity, smooth and luscious in the glass. I get red fruit, but I get a lot more um, dark fruit. I was writing it down. I got black fruit, cassis, black cherry. I got some cocoa. I got some like hints of spice on the finish. Um, it was harvested at the end of September, and after being destemmed and crushed, the must macerates on the skin for 10 days. And once malolactic fermentation is complete, the wine is aged one year, aged in one and two year old uh, barrels for six months. And the wine is ready to drink, but then it will um, evolve over the next three to four years. Mine, so. I didn't say, mine was actually a 2016. Okay. Mine was a 2016. Yeah, you got the young. Now, that's interesting because you got the younger wine on the spectrum, and I've got an older wine on the spectrum. Yeah. This is, I'm digging it. And uh, when I went back to Wink over the weekend when I was looking up some information on the winery, it sold out. So apparently oh. a lot of people, a yeah. lot of people like it. All right. We are up to... Um, we are up to you doing food pairings. Nope, that's me doing food pairings. That's me doing food pairings. So Negro Amaro can be made into either big heavy wines or lighter wines. They tend to be aromatic either way, which I would have to agree to that, um, that the this is extremely aromatic. And um, so, in fact, the best rosé wines are can actually be Negro Amaro. So um, I did not see anywhere a rosé of Negro Amaro, but now I'm going to have to give it a try. And on top of that, they also produce sparkling pink Negro Amaro. So we're going to have to give that a whirl also. Uh, Puglian wines work well with a variety of foods. You could pair spicy foods, fatty meats like lamb, red sauce dishes, hard and soft cheeses, vegetables, fruity tomatoes, peppery olive oils. All of this stuff is perfect. Um, what I have here, the slide number one, is a variety of cheeses. It goes with a lot of hard and soft cheese. Next up is an antipasto. So I'm digging those. I don't know what those things are called, those little pepper things down on the bottom. They start with a P, I think. I love those things. Um, pecca, I don't know what they're called. Um, pecca, pecarine, peccacino, something pecarine. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love those. I, I can eat those all days long. And those breadsticks, yeah, they're all mine. I'm claiming them. Next up is a slow-baked lamb and potatoes. Ooh, I can do that. Um, I'll eat the potatoes, but no lamb. I'll eat your lamb. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll order two. I'll eat all your potatoes, and you can eat all the lamb. 
Another one I'm not going to touch, uh, grilled tuna steak. Mm, I'm not a tuna person. No? I don't know. I'm, I, I like my fish cooked. Oh, yeah. No, no fish. <laughs> and last up is a stuffed aubergine, which is an eggplant. So that's it. This is this might be the fastest speed round of Wine for Bet Street that we've ever had because there's just so much, or I should say, so little information out there. Yeah, and Jim, yeah, I don't think um, the grandma might would go with tuna. I don't know. See, I don't eat tuna. Yeah. Jim is so, saying that he loves tuna yeah, steak, but the Negro Amaro is too strong. But you know what? Yours, it might be lighter because yours is a younger. Yeah. A younger. Jim, what, what vintage is yours? And Michael is saying he's drinking a 14. Okay. So Michael, do you think that yours would go with a tuna steak or any of those dishes? We'll see what they yeah, say. Jim's is 2012, so his is aged. Oh. So. See, now that's kind of interesting because when you think about wines that we're more familiar with, the when you drink a wine young, it's usually bigger and bolder and hasn't evolved into its, you know, delicacy yet. Right. But this seems to be um, completely the opposite, right? You're saying that, Michael says that his would go well with, with grilled tuna. Oh, all right. So I, I can't comment on the grilled tuna thing either because I don't I do not do tuna. Yeah. I mean, other than those cheeses, I don't eat any of the stuff that was recommended. I can see this going well with lamb. Yeah. I can, I can definitely. I don't know. I mean, I get it. I get it, but I can't. <laughs> say I get it to go with lamb but yeah no I can I can see it going nicely with lamb okay all right awesome. definitely so, so we are up to grilled portobello yeah Jim you hit it right on the nail nail on the head I could definitely see it with game grilled portobello or spicy Italian tomato sauce so the thing that popped in my head not that I have ever ever tasted it um, but now you, you said game. Um, I'm thinking wild boar. From how Mike describes what wild boar is, that's I, that's what I'm... Yeah, it would. I, I've, had, I've actually had wild boar in Italy. Oh. And it was good. So Karen yeah. says it pairs well with pulled pork, sweet chicken, and zesty barbecue. Well, you know, they say it's similar to Zinfandel, and those right. are common pairings with Zinfandel. So, yeah, I get that. And I can see this with uh, venison, maybe. Even rabbit, depending on how the rabbit's cooked. I wonder yeah. if it would go good with the duck special at the restaurant. Or venison, much more con Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. Think, I think wild boar is much more common um, here. So the venison, I don't know. I think a lot of people do eat venison depending on where you live. Um, Mike's family eats venison all of the time. I've been exposed to venison a lot. Like, you know, in the Hudson Valley, everybody, you know. Right, hunting. Hunt. Um, but my first real true, I mean, we would eat it in chili and stuff. But when I was uh, a couple wine fests ago, one of the chefs, cook this venison and he was really proud of it and he says let me give you a taste he takes this hunk and he cuts it for me and it was it was medium rare and I'm like oh my god I, I go mm. I need a much smaller piece I said you know I, I can't fit all that in my mouth because I thought to myself if I don't like this you know how can I politely swallow <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I ate it and it was really good and now I will go out and like Gus made a venison last year and I, I was good right so well you know what Jim we do uh Gus does venison at the restaurant so and he cooks a really good venison so and it, yeah you said it would work good with the duck it would probably go great the duck was uh, cured in uh pastrami style and then marinated in a huckleberry marinade for 72 hours oh. so I bet you it would go well so going back on the game thing, again, never would I ever, ever touch this or put that in my mouth. 
ostrich. Again, going off of how people describe ostrich. Yes. I don't know how people eat ostrich. Yes, both but. had ostrich and actually found it at Stop and Shop and bought it at home and made it. I made a steak, he made ostrich. All right, so, so let's get to those five quick facts. Five fun facts. Gramo is, is basically um, concentrated in the Salento region in Italy. And it's actually, it, it's pretty healthy wine. It's high in resveratrol. And anthocyanin. Sciencin. Anthocyanin. Yeah, there you go. It's the uh, blue. The blueberry, blueberry is uh, high in that as well. The first rosé bottled in Italy was in 1943, and it was made from Negramo grapes. So how's that little beef? factoid there and that's a pretty color rosé it is a pretty color you know it's almost like um maraschino cherry color yes i just read a research article about colors of rosé because you know that's what i do in my spare time read research articles um and uh the number one color uh that people enjoy are is the peche the peach oh, really? color yep Wow. So Negramo is one of the 13 native grape varietals in Puglia. So, and it comes from the intersection of, a, you know, Latin and Greek. Right. And, you know, going down to um, nigger meaning black in Latin and mavros meaning black in ancient Greek. Right. And another um, thing to note that I picked up is look for small producers that cultivate the grape. They tend to um, make wine that highlights its unique um, qualities. Right. So, well, not really a full sidebar or whatever, but um, I love Supernatural. I don't know if anybody else ever watches that show. Okay, so I adore that show, and I live for that show. And um, one of, I don't know, a few seasons ago, the Winchester Brothers released The Darkness, which um, was turned out to be God's sister, um, but her name was Amara. And I, when I watched the show, I never realized the meaning behind that. But if you think about the darkness and her name being Amara coming from the black, makes kind of sense. Gotta love Supernatural and how yeah. they research things. <laughs> So everybody should be watching Supernatural, the things you learn. <laughs> I'm telling you, you learn different tidbits no matter what you watch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So that is that is all I have for Negro Amaro. Um, it's been the quickest um, wine for Bed Street. It has been. And I'm kind of sad that it was so fast because I feel like I'm not doing the wine justice because I really – did enjoy it and uh, I'm really liking this a lot. Yeah, um, I really am. I I'm not. I think I was more blown away by the Menthia last month, but this is this is beautiful. Like it really well, what is. I liked the Menthia, Menthia last month is that pepper on the finish because I'm mm. a pepperhead too. Besides, you know. But this has spice. Mine has spice. This is spice, but I like that black pepper. Zip. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm really into that. But this has spice. This has more um, almost cinnamon spice. Oh, okay. I would say. Okay. Now I said he would add this to my cellar. I would add this. I would put this in my cellar too. Yeah. If it wasn't sold out, I definitely would. I don't think it would, I don't think it would age. I would age this any longer than, than what it is right now. No. But I would definitely be into buying younger ones. And then trying them at the different stages. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's interesting. I'm going to have to go. Um, I was so happy when I saw this on Wink that I just ordered it. Um, I didn't walk into a store to see if I can get any Negro Amaro um, there. So we'll see. Uh, really, Jim, you think it would age 10 years? That's... Your, yours must be much bigger than, than what mine is. Um, but remember, yours is young, Lori. 
Yes. Yes. Well, Jim, you said yours, his was a 2012, or was that Michael? I don't know. Somebody, oh, no, Michael has a 2014. So I have a 2013. Okay, so we so got mine's a, five years old. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so 2012. Okay. I don't know if I would age mine much longer than this. Yeah, so just out of complete curiosity, uh, you said yours was how much, Deb? Eleven ninety nine. Eleven. Mine was fourteen. Uh, Michael, Jim, if you don't mind sharing, how much were yours? I think Michael said his was twenty something. Oh, because I was gonna say these seem to be very budget friendly. So Jim's was fifteen. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, they see they seem to be very budget friendly for what you get. I think it's extremely high yeah. quality for for what you get. Yeah. It's a it's a great. Uh, I'm surprised, Karen, too, that you couldn't find the wine. Yeah. And it grows in Australia. Australia and California. Probably. Yeah, I did. I did come across the information that there are some regions um, uh, in California that are growing Negro Amaro, um, but it seemed that they were using them um, in a blend versus a straight a straight um negro amaro um but that would be really interesting i now, I, do you think it's because they don't feel it would stand alone well um i my marketing brain is saying they think it won't sell as an individual um but i i i don't know uh, wow michael yours was 28 dollars so yeah, that is definitely not. not a, you know, a, let me throw a few of these in um, and let's give it a try type thing. That's. Jim tried six stores. Wow. Wow. I'm surprised in New York. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for so much effort, Jim, to find one to join us. Yeah. So that is that that is true determination there. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, so that we know because Debbie does the calendar much better than I do. Oh, yeah. Here, wait a second. Where is it? Um, I have it up somewhere. Our next episode is O. Is O, and or, it is going to be Orvieto. Um, so yeah, so our next episode is August twentieth, and no, August twentieth. What? Orvieto. 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 So thank you everybody for joining. Yes, thank and you. Thank you for the wonderful conversation, and thank you so much for running on out and getting bottles to be drinking with us. That is phenomenal. And um, I see Debbie does the technical yeah. thing. Maybe if we, you guys have bottles next month, can we, can we get we them in? Add them. I think there is a way to add them in. So that's all Debbie. I just show up and drink. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe next month we can uh, get some people you in. You have to find yeah. yeah. And that should be fairly easy. I mean, that's so one to say. But I've seen it on wine lists. I introduced uh, Paul to Orvetto actually in Rhode Island when we ate at um, a restaurant for lunch by visiting our daughter there. Oh, you're welcome, Michael. You're welcome. And it, it's great to be able to sit down here and discuss the wine and talk about the research that we've done on it and to drink the wine with, with all of you. And, you know, we go out, we, we get the wine just like you guys do. And it's, it's nice to see the different brands and the different price points and the yeah. different tastes. Everybody, um, you know, yeah. like the profiles that everyone's have. I think I got my Orvieto at Total Wine. So if that helps anybody, since Total Wine is everywhere. And... Oh, August, Karen. Yeah. Um, I got mine at Viscount and Fishkill. <laughs> there you go. All right. So thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, everyone. Hopefully... And we Hope you, next week. Yeah, hope you enjoyed Negri Amaro. Cheers. Cheers. My glass is empty again, but cheers. Have a, have, have a great uh, rest of the week, guys. Yes. Slancha. Yeah. Cheers.
Thanks for listening to Dracaena Wines Podcast. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like us to discuss, please reach out to us on social media. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, Google, and Periscope as at Dracaena Wines. I am also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoyt Bud, or email us at DracaenaWines.com. If you enjoyed our podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast catcher to help others find us more easily. We are found on all of your favorite aggregators. To subscribe easily to iTunes, go to bit.ly forward slash Dracaena podcast. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Dracaena podcast. And that's a capital D for Dracaena and capital P for podcast. Please check out our award-winning wines and find out about our wine club at DracinaWines.com. And remember to always pursue your passion. Slancha!